Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. And it's Thursday once again, and that means only one thing, we have an update. So what have we got in this week's patch? Well, we've got some quite interesting functions added to things that we already had in the game, as well as a few little tweaks and a few new settings. So let's get started by looking at some of the most interesting parts, and then we'll move on to some of the settings in the menu. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that these landing gears over here are this strange blue colour. You're probably asking why. It's because the landing gears have been given a new setting. So if we go down here to this power generator and access it by pressing K, and we select all landing gears, we have this new feature that says auto lock. So if we just disable that, the landing gears will return back to normal. So when an object's placed near them, you'll have to manually lock them in place. Now, this is extremely useful, so imagine you've got a cargo ship and you've got people loading cargo into the ship. So you'd activate auto lock and you'd use the force brake. So the force brake is basically how much force will be applied to the landing gears to actually break the lock with the object. So I'll show you, I've got a cargo container here. So say for some reason I was transferring this between my ship. I've done a little mock-up of some hangar doors over here on this side. So we can just imagine flying it through and you'd fly it from here from here or maybe even this is your cargo area cargo bay sort of style thing you fly it across and if you look here we can see that these landing gears are a lot green when we get it close so there we go we have them locked in place so we just disable our actual landing gear on the front of our ship and we're gonna fly off and now that is there and it is locked in place the only thing that's gonna budge that is force so say for some reason I need to sort this box into a different part of my ship I can run on over, grab it with my landing gears, like so, and I can just take off and move it somewhere else around the ship. So maybe say this area over here is the department for mail or something, whatever it's carrying in the ship. And we'd simply drop it off like that and we continue on sorting through our files or whatever was in the container or raw materials and so on. So that's quite interesting. You could also use that as some sort of way of keeping a vehicle on the ground. Now, moving over here, we have rotors. Now, rotors have been reworked. They can now accept power through the base, so we no longer have a power generator up here to power whatever's on top. The power is going straight through the blocks underneath and into them lights without a power generator being needed. So if we go over here, we can actually have a look at some of the new functions. So you can see that these are a different color. And they're a different colour because they're mounted actually above. Anything mounted on that rotor becomes a different colour and so on and so on. So more rotors, the more different colours you have. So I'll show you over here exactly how this works. So we've all had solar panels and we've all wanted solar farms in the past. And the problem is you could not position them and get the power back down through the rotor. Now something that I've been experimenting with is actually getting the power from the rotor back down into the control panel below. And now that is what we're able to do. So we can actually position our solar farm into the sun's direction. So some of these panels here, are just they're just not in the right position. They're just not getting us enough power. We need maximum four bars. We've got two on four. That one's not up maximum efficiency and that one's not maximum efficiency. So let's move this into a more efficient position. So if we get inside our cockpit, we press K. Maybe we get a nice angle first. And you can see these different colored rotors because they're showing what parts are attached to which part. So now we have two angles. We have the first angle being either the base or the actual arm itself, and then we have the second one. So let's go with angle two, when we'll activate that. And you can actually see how we're tilting them up and down. So we'll reverse that. And I think that's probably about right. And then we're gonna move angle one, that's gonna be the base. And we'll stick that on. And we don't want it going that way, we want it going in the reverse direction so the sunlight can get maximum efficiency. That's, that's looking really good. So we can just switch that off and hopefully we'll manage to turn all our solar power panels onto full green. So that's full green, that's perfect. So if you're in a ship and you happen to be in a different direction to where you first built your panels, you can rotate your panels now into a safe position. Now, this is also gonna also take into consideration center of mass. So each one of these is built on a center of mass. If you built an unstable one, the rotor tends to be a little bit unstable and will crash. But the main problem is we can't actually see the center of mass, so we've got to kind of work out where it is, but now we can actually see it by going over to the cockpit, 
And if we go over here, you can actually see in the information, show center of mass of the objects. So this is extremely useful in ba balancing it and making it correct. Otherwise, it'll start to get floppy and it'll just be completely out of control when you're trying to move it. So you can see the center of mass. The most effective center of mass is to have this axis here in line with the axis below. So if this was moving, it wouldn't be very stable. But since it's a stationary platform at the moment, it's perfectly fine. So let's move on. So over here, we have a, some sort of satellite system and we need to unfold the solar panels so we can get maximum coverage. And when they're like this, it's more suitable for transport. So let's actually unravel the solar panels and see what just happens. So if we go over to our control panel, we should have the option of rotors and rotors are currently on. So if we hit, for instance, the reverse button, you'll see they start to unfold like so. Now, this is going to be quite interesting because what exactly is going to happen here is they'll start to fold out onto this axis like so. And then what will happen is they'll go below, but we need to get them actually straight and perfect. So what we need to do is do a quick little adjustment in flight. Come over here and press K. You could probably wire this up so it does this pretty much straight away. So move that to one and one final adjustment and we'll bring that straight out so you can see how the panels themselves have moved from that compact sort of two or three block spread all the way up to maximum extension where we should get extremely good light coverage on all them solar panels and that should power our ship very nice and it's also a very good backup system you could store something like that inside the hull of your ship say one of your actors gets shot out or something gets damaged after the battle's over, you just extend out your solar panels and you drift back home in whatever wreck state you may be on. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the menu features. So we return to the main menu to actually have a look at some of the new features of starting a new world. So if we go on there and we create a custard world, no, I mean a custom custom world, we're basically going to have some new features. So we go to advanced and we look here, we have trash removal. So auto trash removal means that if the ship is unpowered, uncontrolled, or without a med bay, and it's far away enough from players, that it will be deleted, it will be scrapped, and it will allow your world to perform a hell of a lot better. Now, what's more important than that is the ability to delete respawn ships. Now, I've had survival episodes when I've had hundreds of respawn ships parked off in the distance, and it's just not going to be good for the game. It's going to drop your frame rate over time. And what this allows you to do is delete the respawn ship when you log out or if it's not active for a certain amount of time it'll just be deleted and it'll save you a hell of a lot of hassle now moving on to the final thing we're going to have a look at is limit world size and limit world size allows you to do exactly what it says on the tin you can shorten the world or the player area either on your server or yourself so you can have up to 100 kilometers or you can have unlimited currently there is some distance issues and that's probably why this has been introduced so if a player goes too far away, they're not going to see a massive performance drop. All quite interesting, all quite simple, and they've all been added to the game in this great moment in time. So thanks for watching, guys, and let me know what you've got planned for the new rotary functions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.